<clears throat> Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, and those of you for whom this video is intended. Please go ahead and get yourself an authorized version of the scriptures. The King James scriptures, these are the true and real scriptures. If you have what is called a Bible, okay, like the NIV, <coughs> beg your pardon, the NIV is called a Bible. The ESV is called a Bible, okay? The New American Standard is called a Bible. The New Revised Standard Version is called the Bible, okay? See, it even says Holy Bible on the King James Scriptures. You search the Scriptures, the word Bible is not within the Scriptures, okay? These are the Scriptures. You will need to get an authorized version of the Scriptures, okay? Um, also, too, very quickly, <clears throat> in this video, I'm going to put several links in the description box. But for those of you for whom this is intended, I am going to put in the description box the finest gospel pre presentation on all of YouTube done by preacher, my beloved brother and friend, Aaron Deeren. Okay, I'm going to put his, the gospel presentation that the Lord gave him in this video, okay? The finest on all of YouTube, okay? And several other links I'm going to put, okay? But with all that said, get the authorized version of the scriptures and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, we are going to read, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory that what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? Salvation is very simple, actually. <clears throat> It is repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? What does that mean? You have to be broken of yourself, your self-righteousness, your pride. Okay? You turn from yourself onto the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that turning in brokenness, there will be genuine sorrow. For what you have done unto the Lord. Because through the scriptures and through someone whom the Lord will send on to you will tell you the truth that you ain't good, that you cannot save yourself. Okay? You weren't worth dying for. All right? Okay? You are broken of yourself, sorrowful. Godly sorrow, which leads to repentance, okay? Turning of yourself and turning on the, to the Lord and believing on him for what he did for you on the cross. And in that brokenness and believing on him, you will cry out. You will call upon the name of the Lord, okay? It just happens. Okay? It just happens. You need to be broken before you can be fixed. Okay? You got it? It's very simple. Like I said, I'm going to put uh, Preacher Aaron Deering's, uh, Deering's video, his gospel presentation, in this video. Okay? That is the gospel for today. Very simple. Very simple. The hard part is getting over yourself. Okay? But there are those out there who <laughs> say they are Jews and are not, who say that you have to keep the Torah 
the law of Moses, you know, in order to stay saved, all right? Some go as far as that you have to uh, do the things required in the law to be saved, okay? There are those out there that say that. And one of the things that uh, a dear brother of ours uh, recently, uh, yesterday, uh, ran into someone who was saying that we have to keep the Sabbath today. We have to keep the Sabbath. We are commanded today in this dispensation to keep the Sabbath. All right? Really? 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 Let's look into this, okay? Now, this is not going to be as in-depth as this could be. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible because those who are um, willfully deceived and very aggressive saying that you have to keep the Sabbath, you're not right with God, you're not saved unless you keep the Sabbath, okay? I'm going to try to keep this very simple because those types can't handle much scripture. If you are ignorant, not knowing better, or a babe or a novice, you are excluded. This is more a poke at those who adamantly say that we today, especially us of the Gentiles, hi, have to keep the Sabbath, okay? This is what this is for, all right? I'm going to poke at you. I'm going to poke at you a little bit, okay? So, in the authorized version of the scriptures, turn to Exodus chapter 31, okay? Exodus chapter 31. And you, <laughs> of the lost tribe of Israel that are in Europe, uh, I forget what that heresy is called, the, the Denites or the Kenites are considered the lost tribe of Israel, and they're in Europe, or some, some, some stupid nonsense. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Exodus chapter 31, we will be reading verses 12 on to verse 17. You are expected to follow me along in the scriptures, okay? Exodus chapter 31, verses 12 on to verse 17. We begin. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbaths ye shall keep. Do you, do you see that right there? You see that? Okay. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Now, like, stop right there. Stop right there. Let's read that again slowly, okay? <clears throat> Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. You. Okay? Let's continue. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. You modern Sabbath keepers who are adamant that we have to keep the Sabbath today in this dispensation, are you putting people to death because they break the Sabbath? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, hush, hush. Let's continue reading, okay? Let's re uh, reread again from verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Notice how it says that soul, okay? that soul shall be cut off from among his people, okay? Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of 
Israel shall keep the Sabbath. <clears throat> Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Hey, how are you looking at verse 17? It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Now, the Sabbath day is Saturday. Okay, not today, Sunday. Today is the first day of the week. You could say today is the Lord's day. But the Sabbath is Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Okay? We we all agree on that, except for these wicked Catholics. Okay? The Sabbath is Saturday, not today, Sunday. Okay? You with me? Okay? Now, go to Ezekiel chapter 20. Like I said, this is not as in-depth as it could be. If you watch any of the videos that the Lord does through me, um, you know I like to get into detail about things. This one is going to be as simple as possible, okay? Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 12, okay? And it came to pass in the seventh year, Get a load of that. In the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abomination of their fathers. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel, In the day when I chose Israel, And lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up my hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. In the, in the day that I lifted up my hand unto them, to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not yourselves <clears throat> with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me, and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them, and bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes, and shewed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. <clears throat> Moreover also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. Okay? Are you with me so far? Yes? Okay? Now go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Those of you of the Church of the Living God will notice right away that I'm not touching on a certain thing yet. We'll get to that. Okay? 
we'll get to that. But we got to go through this process, okay? Like I said, I'm keeping this as simple as possible. Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 14, okay? Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 14. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were unhungered, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was unhungered, and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God, and did eat the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have ye not read in the law, how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath, and are blameless? But I say unto you, that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, ye would not have contemned, contend, contemned the guilt, uh, excuse me, <laughs> ye would not have condemned the guiltless, beg your pardon for that. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a how much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then said he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, like as the other. Look at this. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. Okay? Now, go to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, verses 23 on to verse 28. Mark chapter 2, verses 23 on to verse 28. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he saith unto them, Have ye never read what David did when he had need and was in hunger, he and they that were with him? How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest, and did eat the shewbread which was not lawful to eat, but for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, Okay, the Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Let's read that again. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Verse 27 is where a lot of you people who uh, say that we have to keep the Sabbath today. This is where you, one of the many ways you greatly err. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. See, you, you twist it. You think you were made for the Sabbath when the Sabbath was made for you. Okay? That's one of your errors. Okay? But now go to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. 
we will be reading verses 21 on to verse 24. John chapter 7, verses 21 on to verse 24. John 7, verses 21 on to verse 24. Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marveled. Moses, pay attention, Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision. Okay, now Abraham was circumcised, yes, but under the law, the law of Moses, the eighth day that the child was to be circumcised was established in the law of Moses. Hence, Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision. That's what that means. Not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Okay? Those of you who are adamant Sabbath keepers, that you have to keep the Sabbath or you ain't saved. You have to keep the Sabbath in order to be right with God. You as a Gentile have to adapt to the ways of the Jew. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Nonsense. Now go to Acts chapter 15. Okay. Now before we go and start reading in Acts chapter 15, we have to address something, okay? We have to address something. The law of Moses, the Sabbath, that kind of stuff, was for who? The Jewish people, under the law of Moses, the dispensation of the law, and during that time period, it was by faith and works that someone was made right with the Lord. Animal sacrifices for sins had to be done, okay? Also, people were not, as today in this dispensation, people were not sealed as they are today. When you are saved, born again, converted, okay? You are sealed with the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father, okay? God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, one God, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, not three persons that make one God, that's satanic, okay? You have God the Father living within you. You are sealed. Whether you like it or not, you're going to heaven if you are of the church of the living God. Saved born again and converted, okay? Are you with me so far? During the dispensation of the law, that was not there, okay? You had to keep the law of Moses in order to be right with God, okay? And the Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go, okay? Because the circumcision without hands was not there yet. I have a video on that. I'm going to put that in the uh, descriptions, uh, description box as well, okay? It was a different dispensation. It was specifically for the Jewish people, okay? But today, in this dispensation, this dispensation, okay, which is the time of the Gentiles, okay? When Christ spake before the death, burial, and resurrection, doctrinally, Doctrinally, it was under the law, okay? Because the perfect sacrifice for sins had yet to be made. Jesus Christ and him crucified. The blood that he shed on the cross to make atonement for your sins and my sins was not yet done, okay? So doctrinally, before the crucifixion, they were under the law, see, okay? But when Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, hence began the dispensation we are currently in, the time of 
the Gentiles. Okay. Okay. You want proof of dispensations, by the way? Read Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Okay? Okay? Like I said, I'm trying to keep this simple. All right? But you read Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Okay? Can you do that? All right? In this dispensation, you are not saved nor made right with the Lord by keeping the law. Okay? Let me prove that to you before we read Acts chapter uh, read out of Acts chapter 15. Go to the book of Galatians, the finest book in the entirety of the New Testament that deals with this subject. Okay? Galatians chapter uh three. Okay, Galatians chapter 3. We will be reading, oh, verses 19 on to verse 29, okay, in Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 29 to finish the chapter. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgression, transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. And incidentally, there is one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus, not Mary. Not Francis. <coughs> beg your pardon. <coughs> I, beg, I beg your pardon. Get a little congestion going on every once in a while when I think about Catholicism. I beg your pardon. Okay. <coughs> Let's continue at verse twenty-one. Oh, does that does that offend you? Huh? Good. Verse twenty-one. Is the law then against the prophecy promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, barely righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before, came, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Uh, let's read that again. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have put, been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus, and if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, verse 28 is talking as pertaining to salvation, not culturally. It is pertaining on to salvation, salvifically, you could say. Culturally, that's a different story. Salvifically, as pertaining to being saved. Okay? There is neither Jew nor Greek. Okay? There is neither Jew nor Greek. It is to the Jew first and also to the Greek. A Greek, by the way, is a Gentile. Okay? Okay? We know that. Okay? That is talking about salvific, uh, salvifically. Salvation. Okay? Culturally, that that's a whole different that's a whole different animal right there. Okay, okay. 
There is one gospel today to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? That is how you are saved. That is how you are made right with the Lord. Okay? Not by keeping the law. Okay? But now, okay, since we've got this out of the way, go to Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Okay? Now, remember what we read in John chapter 7 about how our Lord said um, that you receive circumcision under Moses? Okay? Okay, let's let's refresh our memories really quick. Go back to John chapter 7. John chapter 7, verses 21 under verse 24. Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. Okay? Okay? And the institutions, the um, the method of adhering to the Sabbath was given under the law of Moses unto the Jewish people. It was for the Jews. It was a sign for the Jews. Okay? Okay? Do we get that? Yes? Okay? Now go to Acts chapter 15. Now those of you is like, oh, you're you're just you're making a point about circumcision. Circumcision. Okay? Abraham was circumcised. Yes. But under the law, how the method of circumcision, when to do it, why to do it, yada yada, was given to you through Moses under the law. Okay? That's my cat opening the door, just so you know. Okay? Under the law that was given. Okay? Remember that. Remember that. When you try to say, oh, you're talking about circumcision. Eh, just wait. Acts chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 11. Okay? Acts chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 11. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Okay? After the manner of Moses. What is after the manner of Moses? The law. Keeping of the law. Okay? Okay? We've already addressed that. Okay? And under the law, we saw that if someone didn't keep the Sabbath of the Jewish people, they were to be stoned and put to death. Okay? Let's continue. When, therefore, Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Let's read that again. That it was needful to circumcise them, comma, and to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for, the, for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up, you know, Pope Peter, that's a joke, okay? And said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them. What are you doing? And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts through faith. What are you doing? Go. Beg your pardon. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? which neither our fathers 
nor we were able to bear. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. Okay? You get that? Okay? This, you could call, was the Jerusalem Conference, where afterwards, everybody was preaching the gospel that Paul preached to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. Paul is the apostle to the Gentile, yes, as Peter was the apostle unto the circumcision, yes. But after Acts 15, everyone, even Peter, was preaching the gospel that Paul preached. Okay? Very important. Get that. Now go to 1 Corinthians now, chapter 1. This we have to remember. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 on to verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 on to verse 24. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Okay? Sabbath was a sign for the Jewish people. Okay? Under the law, where it was faith and works, where you were not sealed unto the day of redemption. Eternal security was not under the law. Okay? Okay? That's, see, that's being dispensational. Okay? It's called rightly dividing the word of truth, which is the biggest error of those of you who are trying to say that today in this dispensation, in order to be right with God, to be saved, and yada yada, you have to keep the law, okay? You have to keep the Sabbath. You have to, as a Gentile, culturally, to be Jewish. No, no. We already looked in Galatians. There is neither Jew nor Greek salvifically. Culturally, that's a different thing, okay? That is where you people err. Uh, err. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth. You are blending all of Scripture together, and you are making a mess of it. Okay? Excluding the novice and the babe. Okay? Those who are ignorant, not knowing better. But those of you who adamantly are for this, you do greatly err. Okay? Now go to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verses 26 on to verse 33. Okay? Romans chapter 9, verses 26 on to verse 33. And it shall come to pass in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah saith, said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after which follow not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, but Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Okay? Okay, are you with me so far? Now, go to Galatians chapter 6. 
Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 16. Okay? Remember what we already looked at. Under the law of Moses, the, um, what do you say, the method, the uh, mode of operation uh, concerning circumcision was given. Okay? Yes, Abraham was circumcised. Yes. But the way to do it, why to do it, that kind of stuff was defined clearly in the law of Moses. Okay? In that dispensation. Okay? In that dispensation. Okay? Galatians chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 16. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, okay? but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice it said, doesn't say in circumcision or the Sabbath. Cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Okay? Now the thing about the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments, you gotta keep the Ten Commandments today in order to be saved. What are our commandments for today in this dispensation? Go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verses 9 and 10. Now, if you are not using the authorized version of the scriptures, there's going to be something missing in verse 9 for you if you are not using the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? You're going you're gonna to notice something if you're following me along. If you're using something that is not the authorized version of the scriptures, you don't have the words of God. Okay? Get over it. Romans chapter 13, verses 9 and 10. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Is that in your Bible? Huh? Is that right there in your Bible? It's in the scriptures. Is it in your Bible? Hmm. I wonder why it's not. Maybe because if you're not using the authorized version of the scriptures, they're bearing false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the same. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Okay? The Pauline epistles is the doctrine for us today in this dispensation. Okay? To the Jew first and also unto the Gentile. Okay? The great Gentile. Okay? This is doctrine for us today. This is our doctrine for today. In this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Uh, I ask you, where is the commandment to keep the Sabbath today? Where is the commandment to keep the Sabbath today? Show it to me in the Pauline epistles. Hmm? Show it to me. It's not there. Because it is not a requirement for you to be saved or to be right with the Lord, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. Okay? Okay? Your problem, those of you, for today, saying that you have to keep 
the Sabbath. You have to go under the law. Trying to bring people under bondage. Here is your problem. Here it is. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Everybody, let's read this together. And, and again, if you are not using the authorized version of the scripture, what does your version say? Work hard, do good, yada, yada. What is your version of the scripture? Or what does your version, your Bible say? Beg your pardon. Yeah. Let me tell you what the scriptures say. Those of you of the Church of the Living God, let's read this together. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is your problem. You are not rightly dividing the word of truth. The scriptures are, all the scriptures are written for me, but it's not all written to me. Okay? This is a Jewish book. Okay? The doctrine of the Pauline epistles is for us today in this dispensation. See, you greatly err, dear friend. You greatly err. Keeping the Sabbath is not a requirement for salvation or to stay saved. Okay? Now, culturally and stuff like that, okay, seriously. If you're Jewish, culturally, if you want to keep the Sabbath, go right ahead. You Gentiles out there, hi, if you want to keep the Sabbath, go ahead. Go right ahead. Knock yourself out, man. Go right ahead. Pour, uh, pour bacon, cheese, and syrup all over that thing. Go right ahead. Knock yourself right out. Do it. Go ahead. But when you start saying that it is a requirement for us today to be right with God and or to be saved, that's heresy. Okay? Now, on a cultural aspect, not salvifically, not salvifically, personally, I do believe if you are Jewish, sure, go ahead, keep the Sabbath. You're not going to go to hell if you don't, okay? You're not going to be out of fellowship with your Lord God, our Father Jesus Christ, if you don't, okay? Because it is not a requirement for salvation today or to be right with the Lord. Okay? Culturally, you are a Jew. Go for it. Gentile, you're Gentile. You want to do that? Go right ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Go, go ahead. But don't you be telling people that they got to do it in order to be right with God, stay saved, and be saved. That's heresy. That's heresy. Okay? Comprende? And also, you got to remember something also, too. Go to Matthew chapter 24, very quickly, and then we'll be done. It's just a little bit longer than I intended, okay? Believe me, this is, this is as simple as I can make it, or else this would have been a two-hour uh, video, okay? <laughs> any of you who watch anything that the Lord does through me, you, you know I'm telling you the truth, okay? Mar uh, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 is talking about what is called the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Israel. The time of Jacob's trouble is for the Jews. The seven-year time period after the church of the living God, the body of Christ, get caught up, redeemed, resurrected, wrongly called the pre-tribulation rapture. It is called the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, Matthew chapter 24 is about talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, after the church of the living God gets caught up. Again, preacher Aaron Deeren, our beloved brother, my dear friend, 
has a wonderful video that he has done on the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. I myself personally have several videos addressing the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble as well. You can't dodge the catching away, dear friend, only if you are willfully ignorant, okay? But Matthew chapter 24, we will be reading verses 15 on to verse 22, okay? 15 on to verse 22 in Matthew chapter 24. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, the definitive article, abomination of desolation, that is referring to the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, okay? Incorrectly referred to as the Antichrist. Also have a video on that. The Antichrist does not appear in the scriptures, okay? In the perversions, sure, but in the scriptures, it doesn't appear, okay? The abomination of desolation, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, okay? Not the Antichrist, okay? That's who this is referring to, okay? Let's reread that. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, the rebuilt third temple, okay? Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea, who will be in Judea? <laughs> Jews. Flee into the mountains, okay? What are we of the Church of the Living God going to be going to Israel to be in Judea during the time? It doesn't work because this is for the Jews, okay? Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. He is speaking on to the Jews, okay? Let's continue. Let them, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Okay? What does that mean? Oh, and let's read verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. What does this mean? Okay. After the church of the living God gets caught up, and those of you who are left behind go into the time of Jacob's trouble, the beast, okay, is going to make a covenant with Israel, I believe, to go strictly after the sons of Ishmael. The Muslims, okay? It's going to be between, be between Rome and Israel, okay? And there's going to be a time period where the Jewish people, when they're going to build their third temple, the law is going to return and they're going to be keeping the Sabbath. They're going to be offering animal sacrifices. Midway through the time of Jacob's trouble, the son of perdition, the beast, is going to go into the temple and say, oh, by the way, here I am. I'm God, okay? But the Sabbath is going to return in the time of Jacob's trouble because the Sabbath was given for a sign unto the Jewish people. Okay? Okay? The Sabbath will return during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And during the time of Jacob's trouble, it is by faith and works. Because if you take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell, ticket punch, no ifs, ands, or buts, no oopsies, nothing like that. You take the mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble, you are guaranteed going to hell. No oops, sorry, you're done. Okay? Okay? So the Sabbath will return during the time of Jacob's trouble. Today, dear friend, it is not a requirement. Okay? It is not a requirement. 
if you want to keep the Sabbath day today, if you're Jewish or even a Gentile, if you want to reserve the Sabbath day, Saturday, yesterday, as your day of rest, go for it. Go for it. But it is not a requirement for your salvation and or to be right with God today. That's why today is the easiest time to get saved. Okay? Now, that's going to be it for this video. It's this went a little longer than I expected. Again, if any of you who watch anything that the Lord does through me, you know that this is a short video. Okay? <laughs> but uh, this is as simple as I can make it. I'm going to put a bunch of links in this video to help y'all along with this. Okay? So, that's going to be it for this video. Prayerfully consider these things. All right? Search the scriptures. Okay? So, again, that's it for this video. We love you. Thank you so much for watching if you do. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Uh,